hearing? Everybody hearing good? Okay.
because he lives in us. Amen. Aren't you glad to be in his presence this morning? Why don't you find somebody and welcome them, all of our visitors. We're so happy to have you with us today. Come on and love on somebody in the Lord this morning.
morning. Good morning. Give everybody a chance to kind of get to their <laughs> seats. I'm not going to yell at you like I did last Sunday. <laughs> I'll be nice. Because there's a police officer here. I saw that. Law enforcement. You might lock me up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But I would like to welcome everyone to Gospel Temple Worship Center. We are so excited to have you here today on this 15th Sunday of September, um, especially our first responders. We are so excited to have you here. Yes. Don't stand up. If you're a first responder, please stand up so we can give you a round of applause. But we do appreciate everything that you've done. I got a, um, a few announcements first. Um, well, if you are a first time visitor here, there is a visitor's card in the back of the chair in front of you. We would like for you to fill that out. And when the offering plate comes around, if you would please stick that in there. Um, there's enough announcements. You got time to fill it out <laughs> before the offering plate comes around. Um, and after service, the pastor, are you meeting them still after service? After service, the pastor, Pastor Tim and his wife, Miss Becky, will meet you over here to my left and your right to greet you. Um, we also have a dinner afterwards for the first responders, too. So um, this coming weekend, our youth, they will be participating in a youth conference at Divine Destiny Church here in Florence. Yes. Um, the service times are Thursday and Friday nights at 7 o'clock and then Saturday morning from 9 to 12. And Pastor Tommy Herndon is going to be speaking. Stand on up, Tommy, so everybody knows who you are. <laughs> he's going to be speaking, and if I don't, I've never heard him speak, but just to hear him laugh, it makes me smile. So he's got, <laughs> the, he's got the funniest laugh. <laughs> You'll hear it later. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, Saturday night, the singles ministry, they're going to meet at 7 o'clock. See Sandy Hughes for more information. I don't know if Sandy's here this morning, um, but if you would see her. In the choir, we're having rehearsal immediately following lunch at 1.30 today. And if you are interested in joining us, please be here at 1.30. We're starting our Christmas stuff, and it's great. Yay. We did an excellent job Sunday, by the That's way. That's right. We could have yeah. sang that today. <laughs> <laughs> No, really, we could have. Um, and the youth service, they're going to meet at 6 o'clock tonight. Okay? So, Amen. with all of that said, are you guys ready to give your tithes and pro offering yes. proclamation? Yes. yes. Go on, stand on up with us. You got the seniors announcement. Oh, Oops. I did. I'm sorry. That's my mother-in-law yelling at me. <laughs> Woo, okay, all right, seniors, Wednesday, October the 9th, they are going to the South Carolina State Fair, and it's $1. The sign-up sheet's in the foyer, so if you're interested in going, uh, please sign up. Their, the time of departure will be announced, and they're going to make traveling arrangements. Also, a trip to Orlando, Florida. Or, uh, I didn't take my son for it today, so I'm getting a little tongue-tied. <laughs> Y'all thought I was kidding about medicine last week, but I really do take it. Um, but anyways, the trip to Orlando, Florida, to the Holy Land experience is being planned for April 2014. So if you are interested in attending that, please sign up on the sign-up sheet in the foyer. And um, Ms. Donna is working on a 2014 calendar. So if there's any trips that you would like to take, please let her know. Okay? Is that it? You're welcome. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and get that Tides and Proclamation back up. All right, as we tithe and give offerings, we believe that we receive from God jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, gifts and surprises, checks in the mail, blessing and increase. Thank, Thank you, Lord, Lord for meeting all, all of my needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen.
congregation. Amen. You may be seated. In light of this celebration service this morning of our first responders, the choir is going to sing a song that um, talks about just that, the gratitude of every person who gives of them time, their time and themselves for this great country. And we're thankful for that, aren't we? We're thankful for the blessing of living in the freedom of the United States of America. up for what we believe is right. So we're so thankful today that we can declare God bless the USA. Yeah. Amen. We praise the Lord for that. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And on this special day today that we've set aside to honor and recognize folks who have so sacrificially and still do give of their time and themselves to make our lives safer and better. Yes. And I want to thank you for coming today. Thank you for taking your time 
from your families on your off time, maybe from your own church, and for whatever the reason, thank you for being here today. We just bless the Lord for the opportunity to be able to have something special for you on this day. I thought it was kind of ironic that we set this day on the Sunday after, as a nation, we remember 12 years ago on 9-11 when our own nation was attacked by people who don't like us and they don't even know us. And so many of those first responders never came out of there. I want us to pause for just a moment as we remember and think about that for just a minute. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, as a nation, we'll never forget the death and destruction that was thrust upon us. And we as a nation are still recovering from the pain and the hurt many people who lost loved ones, fathers and mothers, sisters, brothers, sons, daughters, right on down it goes. We remember today, and we remember this week that there are a lot of evil things still in this world. So Lord, help us that we would never contribute to the problem, but that we would try to be part of the solution. Help us, Lord, as we respond to the needs of the people around us, that we will never forget that you, O oh Lord, was the first responder of all because you saw us in our sinful condition and you recognized that we were separated from the Father because of sin and you responded first Lord we're reminded of the scripture that says we love him because he first loved us so we thank you today Lord as we can say to the greatest first responder that ever was and still is Jesus Christ our Lord who responded to our sinful condition and has saved us by His marvelous grace. We thank you for that now. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor for Jesus' sake. Amen. I want to take the opportunity, if I may today, to personally recognize the, some different departments that are here and some folks who are here who perhaps head these departments or are leaders in these departments. And I, I can't get them all, I'm sure. And if I, if I omit your name, uh, please, it's just because I didn't know it. I've got some of it written down here. So again, I want to thank you. I want to recognize, first of all, the West Florence Fire Department, Assistant Chief Rudy Hendricks. Will you stand wherever you are? Rudy Hendricks, thank you for being here. Thank you, sir. You may be seated. And I just want to, again, thank you, sir, and for all that you do. The House Springs Fire Department, Chief Billy Dillon. Would you stand, please? Let's give Chief Dillon. Thank you, sir, for all that you do. We thank you. The Timmonsville Rescue Squad, Chief Donnie Windham. Where are you? There's Donnie. We welcome you and we thank you, sir. The Sardis, the Sardis Timmonsville Fire Department and Chief Will Ward. Where are you? There you are, Will. Thank you for coming today. 
We thank you for your sacrificial labor of love. And we have uh, South Carolina Highway Patrol, Trooper Graham. Will you stand please? Thank you, Trooper Graham, for being here today. And then we have some retired firefighters. I don't have the names down. And, and we have families and uh, responder, families of these responders who have to be willing for your loved ones to go out and do the things that they do. We were working on our youth building that we recently purchased uh, Friday afternoon. And the, uh, the Black Rescue Squad vehicle from Timmonsville went by with the uh, Lights going, headed toward Florence, so somebody was in trouble and somebody responded. You know, you don't know how to appreciate that till you get in trouble some, sometime, and if you were to call, what if no one responded? So I want to welcome you. I want all of you to stand one more time, and let's honor you, all of the responders and your families. Families, I want you to stand too. We honor you, and we thank you. Thank you so much. Your job, I was thinking today, is a lot like being a pastor. <laughs> Sometimes the only recognition you get is when you don't get it right. <clears throat> but thank you so much for coming today. And uh, again, I cannot say it enough. We also want to especially invite you to stay and have lunch with us. We've prepared a special meal for you back here. And I want to recognize Reagan and Megan. Where are they? They have worked so hard. Megan, you got to stand up one time. Reagan, Reagan's in the kitchen. There's Megan. Hard working girls. Reagan probably knew I was going to have her to stand up. That's why she ran to the kitchen. Thank God for all these people who work behind the scenes who don't want their name out front, they don't, they don't care about their pictures being obvious, but they do such an awesome job. Thank you so much for all that you do. And thank you for being here today to honor these great citizens of this country of ours. We bless you and we pray for you and want you to know that we are in your corner. And we want to make your life better and your job easier if we possibly can. I want to speak for a few minutes today on this nation of ours and what we want to be doing to make this a better nation in order not only for us to live but for our children and our grandchildren after us. You know, there's an old saying, I'm, I don't like to refer to it too often, but you don't have to look hard to tell that I'm not a teenager anymore, so I've been around a while. One of the old sayings that I remember being quoted to me when I was a, a boy growing up is that you don't miss the water till the well runs dry. And that's a, that's a fact. And I was thinking, what if you got in trouble? What if you called and no one cared? Think about what that would do to you. No one cared. So again, we want to honor and recognize people who do care and are trying to make our communities better communities. All right, let's do our pledge to the Word of God. Hold up your Bible if you have it. And let's declare what God's Word is to us. It's on the board. If you don't know it, look on the screen. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, 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 I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if we take the words of this book, literally, we will never be the same, I promise you. 
In Psalms 121, I want to start there today. And I want to talk about this great nation of ours. And it is a great nation. Folks, we got a lot of problems. But thank God they are the kind of problems that I still believe that God Almighty can help to make this nation to where it is the greatest nation continually on the face of this earth. I am not down on America. I believe we still have hope. And our hope is in Jesus Christ the Lord. And our hope is in men and women who want to volunteer to step to the front to make this nation a better nation. The 121st Psalm, I want to begin reading in verse 1. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. I thought that was a good place for us to start today. Because as a nation we realize that there's very few things that we can do to really make an impact on our society. We can cover that little part of the world that we live in. But there's something much greater than that. And that is we can recognize that the only real help will come from the Lord. If we want to take time and talk about our huge national debt, if we want to take time and talk about all of the problems socially and otherwise that exist in this nation, we could do that for a long time. But I choose to today focus on some of the solutions that we need to follow in America. In the book called The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire in 1787 now, Edward Gibbon, an English historian, listed the reasons for the fall of the Roman Empire. Listen to them and see if they sound familiar to the society we live in today. Remember now, 1787 is when this was written. Think about it as I read it to you. Number one was the rapid increase in divorce, which meant the undermining of dignity and the sanctity of the home was being destroyed as the basis of human society. Number two, higher and higher taxes and the spending of public money for the regular population. Number three, the mad craze for pleasure. We're talking about almost 300 years ago now. The mad craze for pleasure. Sports becoming every year more exciting and more brutal. Number four, the building of great armaments and great armies when the real enemy was within the decadence of the people. Number five, the decay of religion. Faith becoming just a mere form where we just go and go through a little program and go home and it changes no one's life. I thought about it as I was reading that. These five reasons for the fall of the Roman Empire and how we could equate those same problems to us today and many of the problems that we have. Listen to this. On a typical day in this country, 5,962 couples marry and 2,986 divorce, about 50%. Every day, drunk drivers do $18 million worth of damage. Every day, every day, 90 million cans of beer are consumed. Every day. Every day, 63,283 cars crash, killing 129 people. Every day, 3,231 women have abortions. Every day. Every day. We build our big armies. We boast of our great might. 
We boast of being the strongest, most powerful nation on the face of this earth. And in many ways we are. But we have lost our way when it comes to the things of God and the things of family and respect as a nation. Pretty much we have lost our way. I found several of the things that Will Rogers used. You know, Will Rogers died in 1935. He was one of the most famous satirists, and we would call them stand-up comedians today. He just said things in a different way than what most people would say. Listen to some of the things he said. A fool and his money are soon elected. <laughs> this is 1935 now, okay? About all I can say for the United States Senate is that it opens with a prayer and closes with an investigation. <laughs> I think there's a lot of truth to that. Another thing he said is, anything important is never left to the vote of the people. We only get to vote on a man. We never get to vote on what he is supposed to do. All right, the next one says, be thankful we're not getting all the government we're paying for. <laughs> he says, I don't, I don't make jokes. I just watch the government and report the facts. He said, if I studied all my life, I couldn't think up half the number of funny things passed in one session of Congress. He says, it's easy being a humorist when you've got the whole government working for you. <laughs> last year we said, this is what he said, last year we said, things can't go on like this. And they didn't, they got worse, he says. Our Constitution protects aliens, drunks, and U.S. Senators. <laughs> the only difference between death and taxes is that death doesn't get any worse every time Congress meets. I tell you, I love to, I love to play jokes with these politicians because some of them are really funny. <laughs> but I'm, the funny part aside, it's also serious. Because it all affects our lives. And every law that is passed in the legislature has an effect on all of us every day that we live. I read the scripture, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence comes my help. I wonder today, do you understand where your help comes from? I wonder if you understand that there is someone who is always on call 24 hours a day. He never sleeps. He, he, will, he will never turn you away. You can call on him at any time, day or night. And it doesn't matter where you live, how much your clothes cost, what kind of car you drive. None of that matters to him. It just matters that you call on him. He said, call on me and I will answer you. God is always on call. You don't have to dial 911 to get him. And you know, folks, I've discovered some of the greatest prayers in the world are the shortest ones that we pray. Sometimes we think that, you know, if I could pray, man, if I could pray like brother so-and-so or this person or that one, wow, how awesome it would be if I could just pray a prayer like that. I want to tell you there have been times in my life that the only thing I could do was yell, Help! A one word prayer. And God was always there. Because He doesn't judge us based on the degree of our education or how well we speak or how we're able to uh, talk about and elocute the things that we want to say. God's responds to us because our heart reaches out to Him and recognizes. But I want you to recognize that as a nation there are some things we want to do, four things in particular. Number four, we must learn to repent. Now I know sometimes we like to think that we've got it all together. We like to think that we're not living in a world that is flawed and we're not living among people that are flawed, but the plain truth is we are living in a flawed society. We're living in a flawed nation. 
And if there's ever been a time that we need to repent and call upon God, it is the time we live in. In 2 Chronicles 7, 14, he says, If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, Then will I hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. God says what we need to do We need for the church world and Christian people to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God and pray and seek His face. We're not called for people outside of the church to, to pray like the church is called to pray. We're called to pray and seek the face of God. That's our job. It's our privilege. It's our opportunity to be able to pray. This is why I can say without reservation, we pray for people. We pray for those in government. We pray for those who are over us in government. And we honor them and respect their position. And we thank God that He has placed certain authorities over us. Because without law and without authority, this would be a heathen nation for sure. And we would none be able to live the kind of lives that we live. You hear me say over and over again, people who are law-abiding citizens, people who live their lives according to the law, the laws are not made for us because we're going to try to do what's right anyway. I like to use the illustration, I live in a neighborhood. I live in a neighborhood, it's a very close residential neighborhood. No one has to tell me not to drive 100 miles per hour in my neighborhood. I mean, I'm just not going to do it. I've got a lot of families. We've got children out in the yards. we got people who are walking on the streets uh, every day. And I'm not going to drive 100 miles an hour. I don't slow down because the sign says for me to slow down. I slow down because I don't want to hurt anybody. And I want to make sure that our neighborhoods are safe. And this is what I'm saying. Those of us who recognize and honor the people who are in authority over us, we make this nation a better place to live. And I want to thank you today, all of you, men and women of God, and people of respect and honor. I want to thank you for honoring this great nation and the laws of this nation that we live by. And I promise you, God blesses us as we bless those who are in authority over us. The Bible teaches us to pray for those that are in authority over us. I'm so thankful that God is still showing His favor to this great nation of ours and what a nation it is. And moms and dads, I want to challenge you today to be the role model to your child that you need to be. There's nothing in the world that you can do that's any greater than setting the example for your children. If you don't do it, how can you expect your children to do it? If you do drugs, and alcohol is a drug, if you do drugs, how do you expect your children not to? There ain't nobody shouting. And you know I'm telling you the truth. The example that you set before your family and your children and your neighborhood will either be to the positive or to the negative. It'll be to the good or the bad. Can your children point to you with pride and say, there's my mom, there's my dad, not just because they identify you by your face, but they say that's because you have lived the life in front of me that I don't mind modeling my life after you. And I feel like it is such a great thing that we need to do. The Bible says that if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, God says we still have to pray. You know, you're a child of God. You love the Lord. And you feel like you're on your way to heaven, but we still are commanded to pray. I don't know about you, but I feel like I have to pray more than I've ever had to pray. 
I feel like that the challenges that come against me at this part of my life right now, I'm having to pray more than I've ever had to pray. You don't necessarily have to spend all that time on your knees. Thank God for that neology. But there are other ways to pray besides that. We live every day, every day of our life, we live in that attitude of prayer and talking things over with the Lord in our spirit. And in doing that, see, we are making the kind of positive contributions to life and to our communities and to our nation. And I thank God I don't apologize for standing up for strong moral values in this nation and I will continue to do so as long as I stand behind this pulpit. I believe that if we pray and call upon the Lord, He said, then, then, then will I hear from heaven. When I pray, then the Lord will come to my rescue. When I pray, then the Lord's ears will be open to my cry. Nothing like prayer. In the dark of the midnight, when everybody else has turned and walked away from you, and there's nothing left, and you feel like your friends have forsaken you, and you feel like you have nothing really left that's worthwhile in your life, there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, and he will not turn away from you, but he will always be by your side, and you can call upon him morning, noon, or night. It doesn't matter. He said, call upon me, and I will answer you. <laughs> Amen. He's always answering the phone. Just call on him. He's always there. We have to pray. Jesus had to pray. We have to pray. We pray for our children. We pray for our grandchildren. We pray for our nation. We pray for our church. We pray for our responders. We pray for everyone out there who's trying to live decent and honorable lives. We pray. Thank God for the power of prayer. It does not require a lot of education. It does not require a lot of money. It just requires a simple heart recognizing I can't do it without the help of God. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Because I promise you, if you haven't hit that place in life yet, you will. That you'll realize you've come to the end of yourself. And there's nothing else that you can do to change it. And you're going to have to have some help that goes beyond yours. Whether it's the sickness of a child or a relative. When the doctors walk in the room and give you very little hope. When you've done all that you can do and yet you're dealing with a rebellious child or a family member and it has hurt you down deep inside and you've tried to talk and you've tried to reason and you've, you've read the right books and you've said the right things and nothing seems to work. I promise you that's when you get to the end of all you can do, then you get to the place that you can call out to God from the deepest part of your being and the Lord will hear you and respond to you. He always responds to you. Hallelujah. Not only do we need to pray, we need to trust. I've discovered that in, in life that when you get to those places, I know I've been to a few places that I had done everything I knew to do and nothing seemed to be happening. Nothing good seemed to be taking place and I didn't know what else to do. And like I just mentioned a moment ago, I'd read all the right books and, and I'd done all the things that I knew to do and nothing was working. And I'd just have to get to the place with God. I said, Lord, I don't know what else to say or what else to do. And I don't know what's going to happen. But you know what, God? I trust you. Amen. <laughs> trust is a powerful thing. Trust is something that has to be earned. You don't just automatically meet a person for the first time and trust them. 
You might just say, well, hello, how you doing? I'm glad to meet you, and, and you're a, a very nice person. And you can walk away and say, that is one of the nicest people I've ever met. But when it comes to trust, that's something else. But you know what I've discovered? All the way from being a child growing up down in the tobacco fields of Horry County, all the way to where I am today through all of these years, I've discovered that I can trust Him. I've discovered that when I couldn't trust other people, I could trust Him. I discovered when the worst things that could possibly happen to me absolutely happened. I discovered that I could trust the one who would never leave me nor forsake me, but he had declared that he would be with me always, even to the end of the world. And I want to tell you today, my friend, we've got someone who can be trusted. Glory to God. Now these people who put their lives on the line every day, these people who go inside of a burning building and they don't know what's waiting, waiting around the corner, they don't know how fierce the fire is, how hot it is, it's only when you get into the circumstances can you really begin to decide what has to be done and what needs to be done. You don't want to be in there with someone that you can't trust. You want to be in there with someone who's got your back. You want to be in there with someone who loves you and who's in there for the same reason you are. And therefore you are trust them. That's your brother. That's your sister in that particular area of work. And you trust them. If you're around one corner and, and they're around the other corner, you know if you yell out to them and you, they know you're telling the truth. They know you're giving them good information and you know you can trust them to respond in the right way. What a beautiful illustration it is for us to be able to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Because those places in life when you don't know what to do and you don't know what's around the next corner and you don't know what's happening when people call you, I often think, and I want to single out my highway patrol trooper here, I often think how it would feel to stop an automobile and have to walk up to that car not knowing what is in that car, not knowing the degree of danger that is in that car, who might be crazy on drugs, or any other number of things, do, can you imagine the possible fear? Now, I couldn't do it, brother. My hat's off to you. I could put that uniform on, but that wouldn't make me a trooper. No, sir, I could wear the uniform. I could stand up straight and tall. But that would not, I don't have the heart for it. And this is what I'm saying. There are circumstances that you will encounter when you walk into this burning house, when, you, when you're trying to rescue someone who's fallen out of a boat into a river, any number of situations, you don't know what you're going to encounter, but it's based on trusting one another that you're getting the right decisions and you're, you're getting the right information so you can do what needs to be done. That's incredibly important. I want to tell you, we got the right information in the Word of God. And it said that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I love that next verse. Most of us stop there. That next verse says, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world. And most people, that's what they like to do. They want to tell you what you're doing wrong. But God didn't send His Son to condemn us, but that the world through Him might be saved. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Can you just imagine God being willing to give up His child? My wife and I have three beautiful daughters, and I love them dearly. And I love you folks. But I wouldn't give up either one of my three daughters for any of you. I love you and I will do anything for you. And in 15 years almost, I think I've just about proved that. 
But that love is nothing to compare with the love of our Heavenly Father who only had one child, just one son. The Bible calls him his one and only son. And yet he was willing to give him up so that we could have life through Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord. But trust is so important. When trust is broken, it takes a long time for it to be restored. It's work to be done to get beyond so you can begin to build back positive again. So thank God for you, sir, and you, ma'am, and all of you who work to make this life that we live better. If I go home today, my wife had surgery this week and she's not able to be here. If I go home and she needs some immediate help, I can call and somebody will respond. I'm so thankful today that there are people who love other people enough to be willing to respond and put yourself on the line for that. What an awesome thing it is. And I want to just bless you today. I can't possibly say it to you enough. I bless you today and I thank you. And I want to thank all of you who pray. I want to thank all of you who bless and support other people along the way. I tell you folks, this this thing that we call life, this journey that we're on and that we're traveling, it gets tough sometimes. And things don't always work out like we wanted them to work or we had hoped. I think all of us as we grow up, we get these ideas in our mind of how we want our latter years to be what we want our families to be like, what we want our life at that particular time to be able to be. But you know, life happens. And sometimes it just doesn't work out the way we had planned and the way we had hoped. But I want to tell you today, no matter what situation you find yourself in, If you're in a wonderful marriage relationship and God has blessed you through many years, be thankful for that and make that better and better every day that you live. If you happen to be alone at this time in your life, what I mean by that, you don't don't have that marriage partner that you expected or hoped or prayed for. I want to tell you God loves you just as much and you're just as much a part of His kingdom, and you can still have a meaningful life. And we just pray that the Lord will bless you to be able to enjoy that part of your life like never before. And I'm just thanking the Lord for it as we bless Him and lift Him up. If if your life is not turned out the way you had envisioned and hope. You don't have to give up hope for God is still on the throne and God is still hearing your prayers and answering when you call on Him. What an awesome God we serve today. I just want to stop right here and let's give the Lord a good applause, a good hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I like that scripture over in, uh, I believe it's 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verses 1 and 2. How about put that up on the board for me? I think it's uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. Look what he said. I exhort therefore, or I encourage you therefore, that first of all, prayers, supplications and prayers and intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men. Let's understand that every person that breathes air is a gift from God. That child that you've had so much problem with, I'm going to remind you that's a gift from God. <laughs> yes. Look, look beyond the obvious. There is something special. He says, give thanks for all men. Verse 1 said, all. Supplications, that's humbling yourself before God. Prayers, and sometimes we got to go further than just prayers. 
Sometimes we have to intercede. That's that deep prayer. When you literally put yourself in the place of the other person and you pray to God just like it was your circumstances instead of theirs. That's intercession. When you interchange with that person and you take on that person's cares and and burdens and responsibilities and you pray just like they are your own, that is a deep, deep prayer. And he said, sometimes it gets to that. But he said, don't forget the part of giving of thanks. The Bible said, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So we're to give thanks to the Lord when we pray. Before the prayer is ever answered, just go ahead and start thanking Him for it. Because when you pray in faith believing, God is moving on your behalf right then. So you can begin to thank Him for it. Lord, I want to thank You. I just give thanks. I want to give thanks. I want to give thanks of what You're doing and all this, that it be made, all of this stuff be made for all men. All men. Look at verse 2. Verse 2 says, for kings. Now I know the ordinary way we do things is normally people who are much higher on the realm than we are politically or whatever. We don't, we don't look at them with a whole lot of respect at times, but we really should. He says, for kings and for all that are in authority, everyone who has authority over us, we're to respect them and pray for them and love them. You don't always have to agree with them, but we have to respect them and pray for them and lift them up that they will make the kind of decisions that will be good not only for you, but for your children and your children's children right on down the line. And he said, let's do that so that we can lead a quiet and peaceable life. Well, That doesn't carry a lot of weight in the Miley Cyrus generation we're living in. And I won't go any further with that. But he says what we should do as the people of God is to live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. In other words, just be what you ought to be. Do what you ought to do. And do it unto the Lord. Not for other people to look at you and pat you on the back. And and I know I've done a lot of just bragging on these folks because I'm so thankful that we're honored today to be able to have this special day set aside for them. But what we do as people of God, we're not living for the Lord so other people can see us. We're living for the Lord because we love Him. And we love Him because He first loved us. He first responded to me before I ever could respond to Him. For when I was lost and on my way to hell, and I had no way to escape, He responded with His great love to me, and He died for me, glory to God. So now... I can have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's important that we spread the message of Christ to the world around us. The Lord's called us to be evangelists. He's called us to share this message with other people. I thought it was interesting. The Institute of American Church Growth asked over 10,000 people this question. I thought it was really interesting. Who was responsible or what was responsible for you coming to Christ and to the church? Here's how they responded. Eight different answers. One answer, I had a special need and the church ministered to my special need. That's 2%. Number two was, I just walked in. Deborah, that's 3%. Only 3% of people Just walk in. All right? 
The other one says, I like the minister. That's 6%. Well, I beat you. That's 6%. I like the preacher, so that's why I'm there. 6%. So that is not what you build the church around. Next one. I visited there, 1%. Next one. I like the Sunday school, 5%. Next one, I attended a revival service, one half of 1%. Next one, I like the programs, 3%. The last one, I have a friend or a relative to invite me, 79%. Almost 80%. Asking 10,000 people, right at 80% of the people said, I am in church or I am a Christian today because a friend or relative of mine invited me and asked me. You see the power you have? You see the power just to be a good neighbor? and the power just to be a friend, and a power just to reach out to someone when they're hurting and say, look, I wish you would come to church with me. I wish, I want to introduce you to Jesus Christ. He is the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. He will change your life. That will do more for that person than all of the things that the church can do possibly is what you can do as an individual person. I want to tell you the Lord wants to do something special in your life today. Amen. The Bible said there in Acts chapter 8 and verse 4 of those early Christians, He said those that were scattered abroad preached the word wherever they went and the church multiplied exceedingly because you couldn't keep them quiet. (laughs) Sounds like a preacher to me. If you, no matter where you put him, he's got something to say. And sometimes we ought to be quiet when we're saying it, but that's just the way it is. But I want to tell you today, my friend, God is on the throne. And God is on the throne and he wants to bless you and he wants to meet the needs of your life wherever you are today. I don't know how many of you here in this place today, whether you know the Lord as your Savior, most of you do, Most of you, I know you personally. Some of you, I do not. But I want to tell you, there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, and you can trust him. You can trust him when things are bad, and you can trust him when things are good. You can trust him whenever things go in like it should. Then you can trust him when nothing is happening like it should. I want to tell you, God's got a plan for your life. He has a plan for you. And He wants you to be a part of that great plan. But you have to want for that to be part of your life. I'm going to ask you to stand with us. I want you to bow your heads with us in prayer today. I know that this is a little bit different kind of a service than what we normally have on a Sunday morning. But I want you to know that God loves you with a love that goes beyond anything that you can possibly imagine. I mentioned to you a moment ago, I wouldn't trade either one of my three girls for any of you. I love you. But I don't have the kind of love that could make me do that. But God so loved the world. Now, folks, that's all of us. That's the wino down in the gutter. That's that druggie that can't keep the habit. That's that wayward child who won't listen to anything you have to say. That's that person at work that always just grates on your nerves all the time. And everybody's got at least one of those somewhere in their life, probably. No matter who you are. But I want to tell you that God loves the world. (laughs) He loves everyone. He doesn't love just some people and not love other people. He loves all of us. 
So that is an awesome responsibility that we have. The responsibility we have is to take the message of Jesus Christ to the world. You can't divide it by race and you can't divide it by nations. You can't divide it by money. There is none. God loves the world. And He gave Himself for the world. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I wonder if we have anybody in this place today you don't know Christ as your Savior and you want to invite Him into your heart today. I'm standing here today and I'm offering you an opportunity if you just come and take me by the hand. I would love to pray the sinner's prayer with you and let you come to a knowledge of Jesus Christ right here in this service this morning. There's nothing I would like better than to have the chance to lead you to a relationship with Christ. Do we have anybody in here who would come today and say, Preacher, I want to change my life. I'm tired of things going the way they have gone. And I want to change my life and turn my life over to Jesus today. Do we have anybody in here? Anyone who would step up here and say, Preacher, I'm ready to change my life. Well, I tell you right now, I believe the Lord is wanting to do something for you. Let me ask you, do you love the Lord? I want you to lift your hand and say, He is my Savior and I love Him today. Lift your hand, let me see you. I'm a Christian, I love the Lord, amen. I'm not embarrassed to do that. I promise you, this is one church, you can lift your hand and you don't have to be embarrassed. You can say amen and you don't have to be embarrassed. Thank God for His blessings and thank Him that we love Him today. I want you to let's one more time sing a little bit of God Bless America, Land That I Love, hallelujah. And let's just close out this service today on, with that you, wonderful story me. and that wonderful song, God Bless America, Land That I Love, hallelujah. I love this great nation. you to get that group to sing God bless the USA for me. Amen. I want to have prayer first of all. 
And in this prayer, I want to pray for our president. I want to pray for the members of Congress. I want to pray for government leaders, for our county leaders, our state leaders, our city leaders. All of these people, they need the wisdom of God, folks. That's right. What they do affects all of our lives. That's right. So let's just bow our heads in prayer right now and ask the Lord's blessings. Come on, choir, pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now because we can pray. Your word exhorts us as we read a moment ago. Your word exhorts us that first of all prayers, first of all intercessions, first of all, all of these things you, be made to you and to be thankful for all men. Lord, we thank you for this great nation. We thank you for our government that makes the laws by which we have to live. We pray for President Obama today. I pray for him. I pray for his family. I pray for his wife, Michelle. I pray for his children. I pray that your hand would be upon them. I pray that you would give him wisdom. I pray that you would give him the heart of God. I pray that you would give him divine direction, that he would lead this country in the way that it should go. Lord, I pray for our vice president. I pray for the members of his cabinet. I pray for all of those leaders. I pray for, the, for the, those that are in the Senate and the House of Representatives. I pray, Lord, for wisdom. I pray for the hand of God. I pray, Lord, that you would lift them up to a level of wisdom and understanding beyond anything they have ever experienced before. And that America, once again, would shine like a bright light to the rest of this world and they would see Jesus in our lives. God, we pray for our state leaders and our county leaders and our cities and in our villages, Lord. We just pray that all of us would have a new consciousness and a new awareness of God. And Lord, we praise you and we thank you and we give you glory today for all that you're doing. In Jesus, the Lord's wonderful name we pray. Amen. I want you to let's join in together. And let's sing this great song. Let the pride of America rise up within you as we sing the this. USA. If tomorrow... 